Levant, the, the Belgrade forest side of Levant, kind of Masla down toward kind of maybe Ayaza, is, is, yeah. that, is that the zone? That, yeah. that, that zone across Vardy, Istanbul, and you know, it, it's quite a large, large zone. And, and, and to the other side, it continues towards Kemerburgas. Yeah. But you're still not in the forest. You are in the city, especially if you're very close to Levant. Um, I believe um, these areas are areas to look out for um, over the next year or two. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk. In this episode, we are at our Istanbul office with Cameron Deacon. Cameron, welcome. It's Hello. what time is it? 6 p.m. after work. A lot of people have left. It's getting darker and darker right now. Uh, it's about 6 p.m., yeah. Yeah, in the office. And um, today, we wanted to talk about um, what everyone else is talking about, really and truly. COVID, right? We have been through a very tough time and i can say that in turkey uh the the, um, the restrictions have been eased don't you think well there are hardly any restrict well there are some but um there are no travel restrictions or there are no restrictions on restaurants or cinemas or anything like that so you know it's it's free now would you say that we're over it well i hope we are yeah i think we are <laughs> I, I, I do think we are. Yeah, I, I do think we. Are. I don't think, I don't think we'll see the um, travel restrictions or any lockdowns, etc. anymore. Which is a great thing. Which is a fantastic. Yes, thing. but um, this COVID came and passed, and boy, did it not change the way we live our lives, and so much so that you know the, the real estate industry in Turkey is. Maybe not completely, but to a great extent, has changed or been affected by COVID. So, my question to you, Cameron Dickin, is how do you see Turkish real estate after COVID? Or rather, what are some of the changes in, in the shift in the buying behavior of Turkish real estate buyers? Okay. Um, we're talking about Turkish domestic market domestic right? market so we're talking about turkish people buying real estate yeah um i mean covid changed a lot of things it, it, it changed how we work yeah um not just in turkey but globally a lot of people um work from home now um sort of online communication things like zoom <coughs> skype you know these types of applications have become commonplace in fact, in fact, I was talking to a friend of mine in the UK and their office never went back. They realized that they've got, um, I think they're in telecommunications sector. Um, there are about 20 people in the office and they decided that except for a core, maybe two, three people, admin people, yeah. the rest will never go back to the office because they realized that working from home is more effective. Yeah, massive, massive. So all, all these yeah. changes have taken place. And um, in terms of real estate, what I'm seeing, and it's very, very noticeable, is that there is a much sharper demand for properties along the south coast of Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, for example, take Bodrum. Yes. In the last two years, land prices in Bodrum have almost doubled. I can't really double. No, I'm serious. Land, pri double. land prices in Bodrum have almost doubled. Uh, uh, and I've never seen such a sharp increase in prices this, before. This doubling, are we talking about hard currency term? Or, or are we talking about terms? hard currency terms? Like so what you would pay, I don't know, a, a, a million dollars for in 2019 you are paying almost $2 million for now. Wow. This is land. And obviously, land prices going up so much has an impact, and already we're seeing that impact, 
um, on the eventual prices of the properties. Although developers don't seem to be able to fully pass that increase onto the buyers because that's too sharp an increase. Yes. But um, if you look at the, um, the prices of properties, say in Bodrum, Fetia, yeah. Antalya, newly built properties, the modern, the more luxury sort of end, you'll see that compared to 2019, in hard currency terms, prices are up by no less than 40%. Mm -hmm. This is in two years. This is in two years. Um, and um, it's partially because of the increase in land prices. And of course, partially, it's opportunistic pricing because there is more demand. Why? Well, simple. Because having been locked up for a few months, like we were back in April, May last year, and then maybe a few more times after that, early this year again, I think, if I remember correctly, and Turkey is not alone in this. There are other countries that experience far longer periods of lockdowns and all sorts of restrictions that meant people having to spend more time indoors at home in more confined spaces, particularly in bigger cities such as Istanbul. Um, that kind of made people think, you know, um, we want a breathing space. We want, we, 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 we want the birds and the bees, the green. So the Mediterranean coast, the Aegean coast of yeah. Turkey, has become more and more desirable. Hence my question now. Let's focus back on Istanbul. We've been through COVID. We have certainly seen a lot of people going, you know, after places that, that would have gardens and balconies and all of that. And, and we've passed that, but that demand is still there. How do you see that going in the next two, three, four, five years? Well, this is what I think. Um, this is what I think. So obviously Istanbul, talking of Istanbul, is a massive, major metropolis. Yeah. So you've, uh, you know, it's, it's densely populated, particularly in the city centers. And um, it's a high level of concrete. And more and more um, is being built because the demand is there. Um, now, think about it. You're going through a lockdown for a month. You are, think about it, husband and wife and two children. And you have a two-bedroom apartment without a balcony. That's a proper lockdown. I can assure you, after that one month, you're going to be wishing that you had a balcony at least. Yeah. Where you could sit outside get some fresh air and not have to stick your head out of the window every five minutes or every 10 minutes i'm just dramatizing it a yeah. little bit but what i'm trying to say is the first thing that comes to mind and i'm seeing it in the new architectural drawings that are coming out oh yeah i'm seeing it it's like the new projects that are about to be launched that will be launched in the next six to eight months you know when when we when we when we review their designs and their architectural um, um, features, I'm seeing a distinct pattern of more and more balconies, larger balconies, um, terraces, and slightly larger green areas. Obviously, not all developers, in my opinion, have understood or have appreciated this need, unfortunately. Some of them are still carrying on the good old-fashioned ways, thinking that anything and everything they will build in Istanbul will sell. That's very may cliche, do, may yeah. do. However, what I'm saying is that the demand is definitely for more space, more breathing space, yeah. and more green. For example, um, buildings that have eco-friendliness, mm. buildings that have what we call living roofs, mm -hmm. where you can actually go out onto the roof and it's a living roof. Um, buildings that have green integrated into their features, yeah. not just in the gardens or in, in the common areas, but the green is integrated into the buildings. Yeah. We have these types of developments mainly in continental Europe. 
and in, in, and in Los Angeles and places like that. But these trends hadn't yet come into Istanbul. Are you saying that this will we will be the start next seeing them? Trend. We will start okay. seeing them. Based yeah. on based on what you always say, you basically, I mean, th every single year in Turkey, 1.5 million real estate transactions take place, and out of that, only in 2019, which was the highest number of the foreign um, the purchases, which was 45,000. Yes. When you factor in even the highest number, you're looking at three maybe maximum 4% of yeah. foreign involvement. Yeah. And as you rightfully always say, that you need to follow the local market. Follow the local market. And follow the Turks money. to yeah. buy like Turks and sell it to a Turk. You will make money in Istanbul. So with that in mind, are you saying that now the uh, foreign investors should be aware of these changing trends in, 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 in the buying behavior and also look of out course. for these types of eco-friendly city center uh, projects because these projects are not easy to come by. I know. And well, let me give you an example. Um, I have a place in Zekeriaka, as you know, yes. and, I, and I spend a lot of time there. Now, in Zekeriaka, um, you'd be hard pushed right now to find a decent home with its own gardens, yeah, good size, um, under a million dollars. In fact, probably the price range now is well above a million dollars. And what I have seen is all the properties in Zekeriako being snapped up over the past year and a half. Throughout the COVID period, Throughout the COVID period, where we had, we, we actually had rather difficulty going out, properties were being sold in Zekeriako. Why? Because Turks, uh, Turkish investors in particular, people who are into buying older houses in places like Zekeriako, renovating, modernizing, putting them back on the market, they're smart. They immediately saw the opportunity and they immediately realized where the market would go. Yeah. So snapping properties in Zekeriako. Very, very good investment. Are there any good opportunities left there? Very few, because they've all been snapped already. Now, Kemerburgas, Göktürk, the same. Same. There's been, there's been, there's been a massive rush toward these areas. And now, for 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 our audience who are not familiar with Zekeriako, Kemerburgas, Göktürk, what's common with all these three little towns is that. They're all situated within the Belgrade Forest of Istanbul. Oh, yeah. The Belgrade Forest is by far the largest it's the green lungs of Istanbul, area as we call it. in Istanbul that stretches from almost the city center all the way up to the, 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 the Black Sea coast in Kilios. It's a massive forest. Yeah. It's a beautiful forest, too. In fact, very mature. Um, anything close to the forest will certainly appreciate. Now, anything close or within the forest will appreciate and my guess is um is that the, the the sharpest and the largest price growth we shall see um along the zones bordering the forest yes not necessarily in it like zekeriako or kilios or whatever we've already seen gains there but areas that are Bordering the forest. Like Maslak. Like what I would say, best of both worlds. You're in the city. Yes. A hop. But yeah. a hop to the other side, you're in the forest. And, you know, you're lucky mate, if you could have a nice view over the forest too. Because that not only gives you a breathing space, but it's a psychological thing too. Of course. When you're sitting in your balcony or you're open your window to see green in front of you, psychologically boosts you up. Yeah, you see what I'm getting. Hundred percent. So I think w what we're going to be seeing is, um, hopefully, there'll be some decent projects coming along because these areas are not necessarily the easiest for developers to negotiate land. But what I think we shall see is that Levant, the the Belgrade forest side of Levant, kind of Masla down toward, kind of maybe. Ayaza, is, is, yeah. that, is that the zone? That, yeah. that, that zone across Vardy, Istanbul, and, you know, it, it's quite a large, large zone. 
and 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 to the other side it continues towards Kemerburgas. Yeah. But you still not in the forest. You are in the city, especially if you're very close to Levan. Um I believe um these areas are areas to look out for um over the next year or two. 2022, 2023. 2022, yeah, um 2023. Um there are two developments that I'm aware that are being planned exactly in these zones we're talking about. Um we probably will get to hear about them over the next six months or so, three to six months. Um, I've seen the designs or one of them. It's kind of along the lines that, that I mentioned, sort of organic colors, organic sort of plenty of green. and Eco They have caught on done already, the so they're doing the right things. Yeah. So I think, you know, these are the, the, the trends. And and um, what else for more urban dwellings where you don't necessarily have access to green because you're really in, in the dense uh, yeah. the, the density balconies or at least French yeah. balconies and maybe what I'm thinking you know that trend that we have experienced over the past five five to ten years in Istanbul in the city center, smaller and smaller and yes. smaller apartments. Yes. I think that trend is about to come to an end. Yes. Although the push from the developer's side is certainly, particularly for urban regeneration, to economize on the space, because yeah. if you do, then you can build more, uh, more sellable units. However, I think now... Um, they are disregarding a certain demand. Yeah. And that demand yeah. is there now after COVID. And I certainly yeah. agree with you there because all of these areas that you and I have been talking about, like Zekeria, Koy, Gokturk, mm. these are all um, villa zones, or in other words, wh where you have a horizontal development. And these areas are very, very limited by the forest. There's only a certain yeah. amount of properties that you can buy and sell. Look, we're talking about 1.5 million transactions. I, I hardly believe that there's no more than 100 properties on the market in all of those areas combined at, at, at any given time, which is, which, is a, which is an amazing estimation. I think in Zakariaco, at any given time, you would have five, six properties on the market, well, and that's about it. Maybe a bit more it. than five, yeah, six. Okay, yeah, let's, certainly, let's say maybe a bit certainly more. Certainly yeah. li limited. So, um, I think, look, the, 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 the thing is this. Istanbul is more than 90% of the city is made up of apartments. You don't have these villas. So smarter developers, what they're doing, or what they're planning to do is to bring this lifestyle that they would have in the forest and put it in the city center. Not an easy thing to do, but... It's, um, it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea. But uh, as you said, I'm expecting to see a few projects like that coming onto yeah. the market and, and changing the trend a little bit. And for, for, for investors... That will be a great investment course, opportunity, don't you course. think? Of course, I think I think it is important to um, to know where the trends are going, and it is important to catch the trends almost before they happen. Yes. So, I mean, these are my thoughts. So, space, green, um, proximity to the forest, proximity to less built density areas of Istanbul. I think these are the keys, and these are certainly some of the factors that people are be, are going to be looking for. Yes. Um, you know, then they may not necessarily want to place themselves in the very thick of the city, but they may want to be very close to the very thick of the city. Yes. Um, you know, if we, if we watch out for those trends and if we kind of source the right properties yes. as a company ourselves, then we will be able to service our clients in the most effective way. And it is important for our clients, I think, to appreciate where the trends are going to be going. Cameron Degan, thank you very much a lot. for the insightful talk. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, please, if you have any questions, comment them down below or with this WhatsApp number. Always you can reach us. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one. Thank you.